Alright, and welcome back into the Zombies ranking series. Last time we ranked Kino der Toten in what I'm going to consider one of my most controversial episodes yet. Today we are going to be tackling 5, a map that I have a love-hate relationship with in the past. 5 was a map I found near impossible to get past round 5 when I was younger, so let's see if things have changed as I've gotten better at the mode and let's see if this changes my perception of the map. If you enjoy 5, it's safe to stick around this time as there isn't a map I dislike as much as Kino for a good long while now and it's predominantly positives I have to say about it. If you missed that Kino episode feel free to go back and check it out before or after this video to find out where it placed on the tier list. Alright before we get started on 5 I just have to remind you all that if you do enjoy hit the like or subscription button as it lets me know to keep making the content and it does support me. We are aiming for 500 subs by the end of the year and we are well over halfway there. If you disagree or agree with any of my points in this video, let me know in the comments and let's get straight into five. Starting again with the positives, I have to say it's good to see my notebook full of positives again after Kino. It was nice to not be nitpicking to find aspects of the map that I enjoy compared to again Kino. Starting off, five makes itself immediately unique from the last four maps by containing an intro cutscene. This is a fully animated intro that really sets the map apart and introduces the characters and sets the tone for the map to come. I find the addition of the intro cutscene to be a massive positive and it is no wonder that maps started to include them later on as they lay out crucial context and expand the relationships of the characters. This is the point that I have to give to 5 as it is practically the first map to do intro cutscenes like this and it just greatly improves the setup and the beginning of the map. Moving on I want to talk about the layout and the aesthetic of 5. Last episode while talking about Kino I talked about how I didn't like maps that are comprised entirely of loot. This remains true still which is why I am so grateful that 5 does something new and unique with its layout. Not only is it the first map to play with major verticality, it also holds elements in its design for every type of player. The people who like training can train in the looped command room, whereas the players that prefer camping can hold out at any of the other two floors that contain multiple perfect camping spots. I enjoy the layout of this map as there are many twists and turns and areas of the map that really make you feel like you have to have a plan ahead with contingencies and plans of escape in case something goes wrong. And I enjoy that aspect of the map as it really Really makes you think. I also want to mention that the aesthetic of this map is phenomenal, especially when you look at all of the previous maps that I have ranked. Every map un up until this point has been a decrepit abandoned facility that just looks torn up. While the facility part is still true here, I like the fact that this map looks clean, polished and still functioning. It adds an aspect to the zombies that cannot be understated. I also like how the map progresses, it gets more and more shady. You start up in the sleek clean offices where nothing too dangerous or shady is going on. Then you move down to the control center, which has this sterile kind of feeling. It's very gray and dark with all this fancy otherworldly technology. Then finally you move down to the laboratory. Side note, I like how the elevators also progress. They show this progression. The first elevator is sleek and clean, whereas the second elevator is more industrial and showing the same progression that the rest of the map shows. The laboratories are creepy areas filled with death and experiments and all that kind of messed up shit that you're... I'm 100% sure the government does. <laughs> the map just looks super cool and I love the progression that you can see while playing it. And I think it really just adds to the overall experience. The characters are something I want to touch on very briefly. I enjoy this cast of characters and I find that like most one map casts, they are incredibly memorable and different from our main class, allowing them to stand out. Overall, I quite enjoy this cast of characters for their one map run. And this is a common trend among other one map only cast specific characters except for one. The pack a punch system on this map is also a huge step up from that of Kino. I personally don't mind when maps have incredibly complicated pack up punch as quest driven maps are often my favorite but I also agree that the average player should be able to obtain pack a punch without a guide. Tangent aside I like the pack a punch on Doris but if you watch the video on Kino you know that I did not like it as much as I saw as an inferior version of Doris. I'm happy to say that 5 is back on track and it is not like Kino at all. While the pack punch system is extremely basic in 5, it is a massive improvement on Kino, as it is something of its own, and it takes the map and the context of the map to its advantage to help with the pack punch. The DEFCON system is one of my favorite early game, early basic map pack punch systems, and I feel like it deserves a mention, as it particularly takes into context where the map is set and I really enjoy that aspect of it. For such an early map, the transport on 5 is also amazing. It's such an improvement on what came in Doris. 
We have multiple teleporters per floor, more often than not, that can help you out in a pinch. We also have elevators, which are perfect for players that prefer to camp as their playstyle. Both of these transport methods allow players to escape from danger in a split-second decision, but they're not all get-out-of-jail-free cards. Zombies will often already have spawned on the next floor when you use an elevator, so you really only have a few seconds of respite to allow yourself to reload and heal. The teleporters allow you more of an escape if you're lucky, being the key word. The thing with the teleporters is, is you can be respawned right next to where you left off from and mauled in seconds because the teleporters don't show you where you're going to teleport to. I do like the risk and reward aspect of both of these systems and I think they greatly improve the gameplay of the map overall. One final positive that I have to mention before we move on to the negatives is the map's unique max ammo boss fight. I absolutely love the Pentagon Thief. While he is a bitch to deal with on lower rounds, with bad weapons, he eventually becomes easier to kill. And more importantly, if you put the effort into killing him, you get some insanely cool rewards. The bonfire sale is literally one of the best power-ups that I have ever seen in zombies, and it is not and it is amazing that you can get on this map. Killing the Pentagon Thief not only gives you your weapons back if you lose them and a max ammo, you also receive bonfire sale if you kill him before he takes any of your weapons. This allows you to pack punch two weapons for only 2,000 points, which is amazing. The main positive here is the fact that you're actually encouraged to pack punch your lesser important weapons, as you can, if you're lucky, get the bonfire sale as early as round five or six, which means you can get two of your lesser important weapons pack a punched and then use them to save up for your proper weapons that you're going to be doing for the full run. And you can keep doing this. You can pack a punch anytime the Pentagon Thief comes, which I just think it's it's a really nice progression form. Okay, moving on to the negatives. They're nowhere near as many as they're worth for the positives. I actually think that this map has the most positives of all of them so far and some of the least amount of negatives that I have written down. The first negative that I have written down is the incredibly difficult early round and I attribute this mostly to the dreadful Black Ops 1 guns mentioned in the Kino video very briefly. Most of these early round guns lose damage at around round 5 and they become completely useless shortly after that. They also run out of ammo incredibly quickly, especially the guns that you get on the first two floors. The majority of the wall weapons in Black Ops 1 in particular, let alone just this map, are just plain bad. It doesn't help with the early round gameplay at all. This is more of a systemic issue over a map specific issue, but I find it actually is wor the worst on 5 as the map is so tight and there's such little space that the weak weapons throw a major wrench into the early game in my opinion. The last negative I want to mention is the god-awful wooden weapon. The Winter's Hell is such a cool concept for a weapon. It also looks cool and it feels super cool to shoot. The blizzard that is shot out of the gun also looks super cool and I love every aspect of this gun to be completely clear. I love all of it except for the damage. It actually hurts me so much that it's actually the most garbage one the weapon ever made because everything else about it is so cool. The damage on this gun starts falling off in the mid-teens and it doesn't even get much better when it's pack punched. The main issue with this gun is its damage and it's such a pity because if you'd have just made it an infinite damage wonder weapon or even like the slick of fire where it loses damage after round 100 or even just later into the game it would have been way better but no instead it's awful and it's really it is just a shame. Okay so that was everything I had written down about 5. I really enjoyed playing it this time around and I had a ton of fun. I also think that coming after Kino, which I hate greatly, benefit this map. Looking at the overall placements I have so far, I am hovering between after or before Doris at the minute. After thinking about it, I have decided that I would prefer to play 5 or Doris if I was to play them right now. I could see this changing down the line, but for now 5 has taken the top of A tier. If you enjoyed, please remember to leave a like and subscription. As I mentioned, we are aiming for 500 subscribers by the end of the year, and if you agreed or disagreed, let me know in the comments below and next time we are going for ascension so i will see you guys then